everyone, and welcome to the Author Market Podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Sperling Horowitz, and today we are pleased to be joined by Stuart Beal. Stuart is one of the most impressive real estate investors I know. He's a true entrepreneur, and what sets him apart to me is how he gives back to his local communities um, and to aspiring real estate investors. Stuart is the president of Beal Capital. He's the president of Beal Properties. Stuart is an Eastern Michigan University alum. So go swoops, right? Um, and that's in Ypsilanti, if we're pronouncing it correctly. And Stuart, it's great to have you on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. So let's jump right into it. Um, how did you get into real estate investing? Yeah, so I grew up in a pretty entrepreneurial family. My father was a contractor. My mother was a attorney. And just from a young age, uh, working uh, around the house, working around... Uh, we have a lake house, working around the lake house, uh, pulling weeds, uh, taking out the trash, raking the lake leaves, mowing the lawn, just kind of became ingrained in what I was doing. And so when I was uh, 13, 14, I started mowing my neighbor's lawns around the neighborhood. And then when I was 16, we started uh, that into an official business. And when I was 19, I sold that business for $250,000. Uh, I received $50,000 down and uh, $1,482 a month for 10 years from the person who bought that business. That's very impressive. And so how did you reinvest it um, from, from that point forward? Is that how you got your, your start in real estate? Yeah, so I uh, wanted to go to Eastern Michigan University. The business school uh, is in downtown. And I started looking at investment properties that are within walking distance because I wanted to do uh, a house hack that I had read about uh, in business magazines and real estate investment books. And so we did what we call a supersized house hack where we bought a five unit uh, of property and I lived in one unit, apartment number four, and then rented out the other four to uh, other people. Awesome. House hacking, um, for those of, of you uh, who are not familiar, is an incredibly powerful way to um, get started in real estate investing. It's essentially um, having tenants um, pay your principal uh, interest, taxes, and insurance, um, and hopefully provide some additional cash flow on top of that. So was it a, a good cash flowing first property for you? Yeah, I still own that property 19 years later. Uh, I've done four cash out refinances. Uh, right. It's cash flowed uh, through good times and bad. And uh, in the beginning, you know, in the first couple of months, uh, it basically did exactly what you're saying, where I was living uh, rent free. Now, I was doing some of the maintenance myself, so the maintenance costs were reduced. Um, but but yeah, it basically did that. And that's what I recommend for first time investors. If you don't have if you're not married and don't have kids, uh, you should buy a duplex or triplex, uh, live in one of the units. And if it's a two or three bedroom, actually rent the second and third bedroom out to people. So you're living with other people. And then of course, if it's a, if it's a duplex or triplex, rent those other units to people. Um, and, the, and then of course, the most simple thing is to buy a, a three bedroom house and you live in one bedroom and rent two to friends. Uh, and that's the, the best way to get started. Absolutely. House hacking is a beautiful thing. Um, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, so Stuart, where are you at now in, uh, in your real estate investing career? Yeah, so I've been doing this for 19 years now, and I'm invested in 6,000 apartments in uh, four, uh, five states. And the way uh, we work is we uh, buy properties ourselves, so we own them 100%. Uh, we also uh, sponsor real estate investments through real estate syndications or one-off deals. And then I also invest in other people's real estate syndications. And that's how we get that uh, large figure, uh, 6,000 units. Um, and Beal Properties, the company I own and manage, uh, which is our property management company, manages 3,000 uh, apartments. Uh, about half of which we either own or are part of our syndications and the other half we manage for third party individuals. If you bought a single family home, we'd gladly manage it for you, that type of thing. And in terms of geographic focus, can you tell us about your core markets and, and where you're um, spending most of your effort? Yeah, so we just invest and we just manage right now in the state of Michigan and the city of Toledo, Ohio, which is on the border of Michigan. And uh, if you bought a single family home in 
uh, Texas or something like that, I would say go hire a local property manager. We focus on uh, just the state of Michigan and, and one city in Ohio. Uh, primarily, our footprint is a one hour radius around uh, Ann Arbor slash Ypsilanti, where, where I live. Okay. And we manage uh, property in 37 cities uh, within a one hour driving distance of our office. And I know you have an impressive staff. I, I enjoy following your updates on, on LinkedIn. Um, can you tell us a little about your team that you've assembled? Yeah, so we have 62 in-house staff members. Uh, and then we have uh, about 30 to 40 subcontractors who work for us. Uh, our staff members uh, are uh, pretty uh, robust in terms of we have uh, nine property managers we have a couple of assistant property managers. We have a four person accounting team uh, that's managing the uh, couple hundred bank accounts that we manage on behalf of uh, staff. And then we have uh, a robust maintenance staff and that's really um, our, uh, one of our main keys to success. If you uh, are renovating a house, you can't quite get it finished and you wanna hire us to manage it. That's a very common thing. Hey Stuart, about 75% of this project, it's petered out. I can't help you find any help to finish it. We can actually finish it just in a matter of days because we can uh, assign our in-house uh, uh, renovation crew to it. Sure. Uh, as opposed to, you know, a lot of other, a lot of other property management companies would say, okay, well, we'll have to get bids. Bids are going to take 45 days because everyone's super busy. We'll get back to you. We might be able to put this house on the market in 90 days. You know, if you, if you sign our contract today, we can put it on the market today because we can get it done in just a couple of days. That's, that is very attractive. Um, I would imagine most, most of your clients are very happy to take you up on, on having you perform that work in-house. Yeah, yeah. They, they uh, like the, the speed that we can put it on the market and the speed that we can rent it uh, because of our in-house capabilities. Uh, so, Stuart, I, I wanted to... Um, touch on on the asset classes that you manage. You mentioned single family from our previous conversation and, and from the introduction here. Um, I know that you're heavily involved in multifamily apartment buildings. Can you tell us a little bit about the, the range of, of real estate asset classes that you focus on? Yeah, we'll manage anything except for storage, which I don't have experience in. Uh, please do talk to me about storage. I'd love to learn more about it. Uh, I'd love to explore that at some point, but we don't manage it today. And we don't manage uh, short-term rentals. That takes a white glove approach that we don't currently offer. And then we don't manage uh, mobile home parks. That requires the buying and selling of mobile homes. Uh, and we just don't have the expertise for that. But we manage uh, single family homes. We manage apartments. We manage a condo, uh, condo associations. And um, we manage anything from a single family home up to the largest apartment complex we manage actually has 468 apartments wow. uh, and everything in between. So we manage a 247 unit, we manage a 154 unit, we manage a 90 unit, and, and then it just goes there, you know, in between uh, one and 90 tons of those. I feel like I have a ton of questions to ask you on the management side, but that could be like a, a, another episode uh, together with you. Um, I, I think that I mean, I can't even imagine a 500, managing a 500 unit apartment building. What, just briefly, what, what, is, uh, what is that like, um, you know, in, in, yes. in the shell? Yeah, so a 468 unit apartment complex has uh, 1,500 people living there approximately. Uh, and that's larger than a lot of cities in the United States, to be honest. Um, and uh, it requires a nine person staff uh, an on-site staff. So you've got a property manager, you've got an assistant property manager, you've got a maintenance manager, you've got a couple of maintenance techs. And then depending on how you structure the landscaping, you've got a couple of landscaper grounds people. Uh, it has a pool. So one of your people have to be uh, trained in a pool. And uh, basically the property is so large that you're done, when you're done trimming the bushes, you have to start trimming the bushes again. Oh my God. A, continuous, a continuous loop because there's over you know, I, I don't know, I, thousands of bushes and trees and, and things on the property. So, uh, and, and the same thing with trash, the, 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 the second you're done picking up the trash in the morning, you have to start picking up the trash again, uh, you know, uh, just because it blows around, you know, a little bit. So um, 
it just uh, it's it's like required. It's like managing a you know a small city basically, and you have to have a, a dedicated staff there to do it. That that's a lot. I, I never really thought uh, that through. And thanks for that feedback. Um, that brings me to to the next question that I wanted to um, to cover with you. Um, can you tell us about a recent deal, um, maybe one that you're currently um, processing? Um, that has some some lessons for for our listeners. Yeah, okay, great. So people ask me uh, how I find off market deals, and uh, they ask me, you know, Stuart, I see you're buying so many deals. How, how do you find them? I'm, I'm on the MLS. I'm on LoopNet. I, I can't find anything. And we run a five point uh, strategy to find off market deals. Uh, the first is letters. I mail letters. I drive around cities and find addresses I'm interested in. I look up who owns them and I mail them letters. The second is social media strategy and things like we're doing now. People reach out uh, saying, Stuart, I'm, I'm interested in selling this property. The third thing is we work with uh, real estate brokers in such a way where they bring us deals before they tell everyone else about them. Because we, uh, while I am a real estate broker, I give the real estate brokers their fee. So I don't try to take part of their fee. Uh, when I'm doing that. Um, and then the fourth thing is uh, constant networking. So uh, I'm constantly networking with owners of real estate. So uh, people all the time ask me, sure, how are you buying these properties off market? And I ask them, well, how many conversations did you have with owners of real estate this week? Mm -hmm. And often it's often the answer is literally zero. And I say, well, how are you going to buy a property from someone if you haven't talked to someone who owns the real estate? And they say, that's a really good point. And so the, the key is networking in those uh, circles, uh, you know, attending your, you know, all your meetups and your chamber of commerce events and your, you know, your uh, uh, parties where they give out awards in the local business community, like all those networking uh, events. And then the fifth thing is, and this is what's really uh, a beautiful thing, is we specialize in buying properties from people that have hired us to manage the properties. And so that gives us a direct link. We already have a great relationship with that person. And we've done that several times recently. We bought a 37 unit in the city of Dundee. They were losing money on this 37 unit, even though they had no debt. Imagine that. Wow. You know, imagine how badly you would have to uh, mismanage a property. Uh, so uh, they hired us. They said, we want to uh, you know, let go of the family member that had been assigned to managing this. We started managing it. And once we started managing it, we were like, wow, this, this might actually have some real value. Let's go out and sell it. And I said, well, don't, you know, don't sell it to anybody, sell it to me. And so we, we bought it from them. And uh, that's one of our strongest performing properties right now is that 37 unit. Uh, you get a better price, you know, that way. Sure. Um, and, and so those are the five, uh, those are the five strategies we use to find off market properties. And if you're running them all at the same time, uh, you'll be analyzing more deals than you could ever buy. You know? Absolutely. Um, I think that's the key to sales. Just always keep, you know, filling and nurturing the funnel. Right. Um, so that 37 unit apartment building, what, what did the um, offer process look like? Do you have um, sort of a framework for, for offering on properties um, that just makes it like a no brainer to work with you? You know, some people waive contingencies, they make sure they can close extremely quickly. Do, do you have any go-to strategies there? Yeah, so uh, first of all, we can pay cash when we have to. Uh, I am blessed by either having the personal resources or investors that allow us to pay cash when we have to. So we buy a lot of vacant buildings okay. and that eliminates, that eliminates a lot of our competitors, right? Because uh, if you buy a vacant building, you, no one's gonna lend you money to buy a vacant building not a traditional loan anyway. And so we can pay cash uh, and that gets us a lot of deals. I bought a vacant church. I bought a vacant former Salvation Army. I bought a vacant frat house. I bought a vacant three unit rental property. I bought a vacant uh, seven unit um, office complex recently, all paying cash. And that uh, gets people comfortable. I mean, we even bought a property uh, three days after signing the purchase agreement uh, oh. with cash. That's the first thing. And then the second thing is, we uh, tell our sellers that we're not going to put them through an extremely painful uh, inspection process. You know, I, I get comfortable with the property before we put it under contract. And then when we inspect, uh, we're not going to nickel and dime them and give them a hard time about a missing faucet here or this garbage disposal doesn't work. 
you know, type of thing. Sure. Um, now, if there's big items, foundation problems, structural problems, roofing problems, we'll talk about it for sure, but we're not going to nickel and dime them. And then the, the third is execution of closing. Uh, you know, I've, I've bought 95% of the properties I've put under contract. So we have a very good uh, track record of closing. That's super helpful insight. Um, move, moving along here, um, briefly, what does a typical day look like um, for you, Stuart? Yeah, so I get up, uh, get up about 7 a.m., uh, get my daughters ready for school with my, my wife, and then I uh, come to the office. And basically, it's uh, first making sure everyone uh, has arrived at work and is doing what uh, we're trying to do. So that's, you know, brief check-ins with the property managers to make sure they've checked in with their maintenance staff and, you know, the plan for the day is being executed. And uh, then, you know, it's emails. I, I work basically on emails all day. Uh, that That's the way um, I, I like to work. Um, emails, you know, emails allow you to stay off the phone and the key to business success is staying off the phone for the most part, uh, except if you're meeting someone for the first time and networking for them for the first time. But, uh, you know, I, I don't talk to residents on the phone uh, for sure. That's a number one key in property management is never speak to a resident on the phone because you'll find out, you'll find that they repeat themselves 19 times and you're, you're on the phone for 23 minutes talking about uh, why the toilet is clogged. Uh, when you could have just sent an email saying uh, the plumber's on the way, you know, yeah. type of thing. That's golden. Uh, so, golden thing. Yeah. So, yeah. So then, so then uh, late afternoon, I start planning the next day and uh, we work with, uh, you know, to-do lists, basically uh, short-term, mid-term and long-term to-do lists so that everyone is on track. And, you know, even a property manager, they know what their job is and they don't need a, a ton of direction but a lot of these properties need constant improvement. They need short-term, mid-term, long-term plans to be executed. So that's kind of what you're working on with the property managers is, okay, this property is hundred percent occupied. Everyone's paid their rent, but let's not just sit back and do nothing. Let's, let's make this property better. So how are we going to do that? Are we replacing the common area carpet? Are we getting quotes to paint the, the walls? Like, you know, how are we going to improve this property? So it's just constant, you know, work. It feels like, um, value value add um, is sort of the core to your real estate investing strategy. You know, it sounds like distressed properties, um, stabilize them, add value, refinance. Um, a lot of people refer to that as like the Burr method, uh, buy, rehab, rent, refinance, repeat. Would you, would you say that that's uh, like the bread and butter for, for, for Beal properties and, and Beal capital? Yeah, that's the exact strategy. Uh, we call it, again, I said the supersized house hack. It's a supersized Burr method. It's the exact same thing. Uh, we bought a 60 unit in Dundee uh, a couple months ago. And we asked all the existing residents to sign uh, rent increases of 5%. Very fair in this market uh, where rent's skyrocketing 10% or more. So we offered the existing tenants a good deal. Uh, please sign with us at 5%. A couple, a couple said no and moved out, whether they were moving in with their boyfriend, they're getting, they're buying a house, they're moving out of state for a job. People move out naturally, uh, whether there's a rent increase or not. And we went into those units and put in new flooring, new paint, new appliances, new countertops, uh, no new cabinets, you know, no moving the walls around, no major improvements. Uh, but they're big apartments, so the flooring, you know, costs quite a bit. And uh, so we ended up putting, you know, three, $3,500 into these units, but we rented them uh, for a $200 a month increase. Um, so we went, we rented an apartment that was renting for five fifty. dollars uh, We put it on the market for seven fifty, dollars mm -hmm. and they were rented in a matter of days. And so we're, we're renting the unit for $2,400 a month more than the, the last uh, owner did. And that pays back those improvements very quickly, yep. uh, about a 16 to 18 month return on investment type of thing. Um, and so if you do that over 60 units, if you increase your rent over a period of a couple of years uh, by $200 a unit, that's $12,000 uh, a month, mm -hmm. not a year. That's 12,000 a month that you've increased. And so when you've increased the, the rent roll by 12,000 a month, that's 1,000, that's 144, uh, 
you know, one hundred and forty four thousand dollars a year, or, or, or however the math works out, and so that's a very huge uh, increase in the ROI of the building, and so you increase the value very quickly. Then you go to the lender, um, get get it appraised and refinance it, right? Yeah, um, exactly. Uh, on that note, have you ever used um, private capital, like worked with private lenders? Yeah, never used, uh, well, no, I did use uh, private lending one time uh, and I did use uh, hard money one time in the foreclosure crisis. I bought a property and I wanted to cash out refinance and I couldn't get a bank to do it because the appraisals were coming back poorly. And I did uh, do a cash out refinance with uh, hard money. Uh, it was okay. two, two guys out of California. Uh, okay. It was success. It was successful. It served its purpose. Cool. Um, all right. We're going to bring it home here um, with uh, an important question, something that I'm excited about. Um, I saw Beal Fund 1 LP. Can you tell our listeners um, about the fund and how they can invest with you? Yeah. So the, the way we work with real estate investors is if you are a accredited investor, uh, we ask you to invest in our real estate syndication. The purpose of a real estate syndication is we pool our money together and buy properties that are larger than we can buy by ourselves. So uh, in Beal Fund 1, we have a 60 unit in the city of Monroe, Michigan. We've got 37 unit in the city of uh, Dundee. We've got a 24 unit in Romulus right next to Detroit Metro Airport. We've got a couple of properties in Toledo. And if you invest into our syndication, you'll own a piece of uh, all of those properties in a pool. And uh, if you go to BealCapital.com and you can email me sbeal at gobeal.com, we can talk about, you know, meeting your real estate investment goals uh, if you want to be a passive investor. Now, if you want to be a hands-on investor and do most of the work, uh, you can also work with us, go out and buy a property in the state of Michigan, do most of the work, uh, get that sweat equity, get that, uh, you know, get, get those uh, bang for your buck type improvements that you can make. And then you can hire us and we'll manage the property uh, so you can move on to the next one too. So we can offer two, two different things. Beautiful. I'm excited to, uh, to, to follow. It seems like, um, seems like a good solid opportunity. Um, now, last couple of questions, Stuart. Um, what motivates you? What, what drives you? Um, and what do you want to accomplish with, um, you know, with your career? Yeah, so I really, really enjoy uh, working. I enjoy uh, looking back on a day's work and seeing how much is accomplished. I really like uh, buying vacant, distressed property and uh, putting it to productive use again. I would say that's my mission. I've done that uh, well over 100 times in the last 19 years, buy a completely vacant property and put it back into productive use. Uh, that, that's really one of my missions. And then the second thing, is I remember when I was young uh, and how I wanted to learn from everyone and get everyone's advice. Uh, I remember when I started my lawn care company when I was 13, I called all the lawn care companies in the phone book and got the owners on the phone when I was 13 and asked them questions and several of them met with me. And then when I was 19, I wanted to invest in real estate. I, I cold emailed an owner, a guy who owns 25,000 apartments and he actually invited me to his office and I met with him. Uh, when I was 19 and asked him all, all the questions I had. And so I remember, I remember those people helping me out. So one of my uh, missions is uh, constant networking, constant giving back uh, and providing value. So if you ask me for a favor, I will guarantee do it. If you ask me for help, I will give you advice. Um, and I get people reaching out all the time and that comes back all the time. So we, we constantly, Hey, Stuart, I rented you, I rented from you nine years ago. It went pretty well. I bought my own investment property. Can you manage it? Or, you know, Stuart, uh, you help me out with this. This guy needs this. Can I put you in touch? And it works out. And so the best example I can give you is a guy named Steve with Curtis Kitchen and Bath. He uh, did a, a, a kitchen project for us in the frat house that we bought. And I asked him to sponsor uh, an event I was doing. It was really important to me. I wanted to have a, a nice list of sponsors, one, to help pay for the event, but two, so that the people coming to the event could uh, see there was some serious professionalism around this event. So Steve said he would sponsor 
he chipped in some money to, to fund the event. And then uh, I referred him to a couple of people who hired him to do cabinets. And then the most beautiful thing happened. A guy named Milo in Romulus, who owns a 24 unit, hired him to replace the cabinets in one of his apartments and also let slip to Steve that Milo wanted to sell the property. Mm-hmm. And so Steve, as he was driving away, called me, Stuart, oh my God, I've got a hot tip for you. A 24 unit directly next to Detroit Metro Airport. This guy wants to sell and he wants to do it now. Here's his phone number. So I called Milo and I had that deal under contract in uh, three days. And so that's kind of how it comes full circle. Yep, that's that's beautiful. Um, I, I feel like there's so many great takeaways from this conversation, um, Stuart. And I was going to ask, you know, what's the most important lesson that you've learned so far in your real estate investing journey? I don't want to speak for you, um, but I would say it's pretty hard to beat that lesson that you just shared um paying it forward and and you know things do come full circle do you have anything that you wanted to add on top of that or or yeah i mean i I would just say you know everything's so negative these days in the news everything's so negative online all the time and so if you follow me online you'll see that uh it's all positive you know i just try to spew positivity all the time um you know, property management is a really tough job. So you'll see me joking sometimes about property management, but I try to do it in a, a positive way. Um, and uh, really just try to keep people focused on, you know, how to, how to go about your day in a positive manner. That's what I do. I, I stay positive all the time. You know, people come at me about all sorts of issues in property management because it's, a, you know, it can be a negative business and I just try to resolve it. I don't engage in it. You know, I just yeah. keep it positive. Wonderful. Stuart, thank you very much for joining us on the Offer Market Podcast. It's been an absolute treat. Um, and I look forward to keeping in touch with you. Wish you all the best um, personally, professionally. And uh, thanks everyone for, for tuning in to this episode. And Stuart, thank you so much. All right. Sounds good. Thank you very much. 